categorical about this until somebody does the work. But I think anybody who knows any cannabis smokers or is a cannabis smoker will know that there's something to the idea that it's not exactly a promoter of diligence, getting up early in the morning and rushing off to work. But neither are, neither are computer games. I didn't say they were. Neither is Facebook. Or peanuts. Or peanuts. Exactly. <laughs> You know, so, and, and, and as individuals, surely we have the right to choose what we put into our body, as long as it's not harming anyone else. No, that's not true. If J.S. Mill is going to rear his ugly head, then we can have that argument. But no, you, 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 you don't have that right. I believe in Mrs. Do as you would be done by, from the Water Vegas. I think she was an excellent role model. I did think, she smoke dope? I don't know. I, I think so I, since I've read it. I, I, I believe she did. Yes. Okay, we've got uh, more, uh, more points in the abstention for both sides. Sir? Yeah, um, I'd just like to mention something that basically is the root of most of the points that were made tonight, uh, which is about the way people use cannabis. And there's no, no denying that there are good ways to use it, there are bad ways to use it. Uh, the one thing I'd like to point out is that it all comes down to knowledge about the substance. That's something none of you has mentioned. Um, it's directly in my line of work to provide people with scientific data about cannabis. And if you suffer, for example, from depression, if you suffer from schizophrenia, if you suffer from chronic pain, certain strains might be helpful, others not. The fact is that, that data is extremely hard to get. It's something which is also not promoted. And I strongly believe that via regulation, as with alcohol, that would basically provide funds which would then enable proper education about the substance. And I'd like to get your advice about that. I think that's absolutely spot on. It's beautiful the demonstration of the benefits of regulation. Well, there's the half of what you say is, um, makes sense, and the other half doesn't. Uh, the, the, the second half, that we need to know more, which seems to me to be something that nobody could disagree with. Of course we need to know more. The first half is a series of assertions uh, about <coughs> the, abil the ability of a, of, of a drug about the, whose principal content was only discovered in 1964. Uh, 1930s and 40s. No, the, no, the THC wasn't isolated until 1964. CBN and CBD were isolated. And also you then talk about various things such as, such as schizophrenia and psychosis, which are very, very loosely defined. And the effects of, of, of any drug on which uh, are very, very hard, it would seem to me, objectively to measure. Now, so you, you mix science with conjecture. And I don't think it's legitimate to do that. I, either you're being a scientist or you're being a propagandist. Propagandists are, 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 are free to, to, to guess and make wild generalizations as often as they like, and people can take them up or, or not. But if you put yourself forward as someone who's making a scientific point, you have to stick to the science. The first part of your proposition are, uh, was a series of statements which nobody could know. Okay. There is no way of knowing. Today in Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, uh, a well-made point, but I did say abstention. Um, so, are there any other points for the abstention? Both sides can answer equally under all pretenses. Sir? Um, do you not think the undeserved stigma that cannabis has, um, also, let's not forget, is um, halting the production of hemp, maybe? I mean, that is a completely different element to the argument. I mean, hemp has over 12,000 uses. I mean, think, think of the impact on the environment that that could potentially have. I mean, what's the, the, the restriction on the exploitation of hemp is absolutely absurd, and it's best demonstrated by the fact that when Harry got his new job trying to stamp out marijuana in 1937, you know, which he managed to successfully do under the Marijuana Tax Act, everybody was happy until the, until the Second World War came along, and then the, Amer the American government dis discovered that hemp was an absolutely vital part in the war effort. It made it compulsory for farmers to grow hemp, whereas immediately before it had been illegal. I always say I really have no opinions on that. I mean, it could have huge implications for the environment if we just didn't have the stigma around cannabis. You know, like, like windows. Yeah, I, I'm sure it'd be terrific. An excellent point. An excellent point in abstention, uh, despite the fact that uh, that not everyone could answer could answer it uh, with uh, with equal opinion. Uh, <laughs> Either, either way, uh, <laughs> can we uh, any more points? Uh, any more points in the abstention, sir? Regarding the what seems to be a key point of your argument, specifically the medicinal purposes of cannabis itself, surely in the statement can be brought probably to either side. There's your opinions on it, the use of things like opiates and steroids, which are 
widely a part of certain drugs and pharmaceuticals that are used widely in this country and in many countries throughout the world. I'd just like to get your, your opinions on both the how cannabis relates to specifically as... Well, I mean, the remarkable thing about cannabis is that, I mean, whereas things like opiates and, and cocaine, if you like, I mean, uh, have, have very narrow therapeutic uses, very narrow range of uses. Cannabis, for the reasons that I explained earlier, what we now understand about the endocannabinoid system and the way the different cannabinoids work, has, has applications across you know, a vast range of conditions, whether it be pain, whether it be mood, whether it be appetite, whether it be, you know, I mean, one of them, um, MS is the most well-known example of, of, of how cannabis helps, and it's popularly understood, I think, by many people, that it alleviates some of the symptoms of MS. Okay, but what is not well-known is that cannabinoids are fundamentally involved in the production of a chemical, which whose name, which name I cannot remember, but is directly implicated in the repairing of the myelin sheath. And it's the destruction of the myelin sheath is what multiple sclerosis is. Uh, similarly, cannabis has an absolutely remarkable effect on Crohn's disease, you know, which is a terrible disease of the gut, uh, autoimmune disease, where, in fact, causing ulceration within the gut. People who have been, who've suffered from Crohn's disease for 20 years, and there are many, there are anecdotes, but there are many tales who suffered from it, who've been bleeding from the back passage for 20 years, start using cannabis, and stop within a matter of weeks. It has an extraordinary range of benefits across many, many conditions. I love this stuff. Um, it's the most brilliant piece of propaganda uh, ever invented. And I can give you the origin of it. Uh, it's an interview with uh, Mr. Keith Stroop, who was then the, uh, the head of the National Organization for Marijuana. Reform of the Marijuana Laws. Uh, is it Reform of Marijuana National you know, Organization you probably Reform know of the Marijuana Laws. February the 6th, 1979, interviewed in the Emory University magazine, the Emory Wheel. They asked him, how is normal utilizing the issue of marijuana treatment of chemotherapy patients? Keith Stroop, we're trying to get marijuana reclassified medically. And if we do that, and we'll do it in at least 20 states this year for chemotherapy patients, we'll be using the issue as a red herring to give marijuana a good name. That's our way of getting to them. He ever Stroop, since he then, he Stroop denies this. He denies it, but alas, uh, I, I knew you were going to say that. Well, he does. So deny. I have his denial here, and I can show you because I you can have one of my many oh, copies of the original, thank you. in Please. which his denial is shown to be false. Thank you. Um, what he says is, I might well have said that the medical use issue was a red herring because it diverts attention away from the larger issue. I think you'll see that that's not what he says. In fact, it's not the case at all. Uh, he also thought that. Um, that uh, he, he'd actually said, said it in a, in a speech or article, but in fact it's in an interview uh, given to a very sympathetic group of journalists from the Emory Wheel. So I wouldn't pay much attention to the denial. Now, as to the, the, the question of um, marijuana and its medical use, and there's no, there's no question at all that under some circumstances uh, marijuana will offer relief of, of, of symptoms, all kinds of things will offer relief of symptoms. For instance, I have a hereditary tendency to, to glaucoma, my father developed it, and I, it's a disease in which I take some interest, and there's no question that if I developed glaucoma and uh, smoked a lot of dope, then the symptoms would be relieved. I would, however, be too zonked to take much advantage of the relief thus given to me. I'd be able to read, but I wouldn't be able to make sense of what I was reading. Well, that doesn't seem to me to be... That doesn't seem to me... That doesn't seem to me to be... Let me continue. Now, on, 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 on multiple sclerosis... <laughs> but it's nonsense. On multiple sclerosis... Well, it's not nonsense, it's sense. Uh, the, 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 the cli clinical trials of, of, of marijuana on, on multiple sclerosis uh, have proven to be difficult. And this is the American Multiple Sclerosis Society talking, not me. Proven to be difficult um, because blind studies are impossible. Because, of course, you can't give someone marijuana and someone else a placebo without people pretty quickly spotting that they've got the marijuana and the other guy hasn't. So it's very difficult to avoid the subjective problems which can get in the way of, of proper objective <laughs> testing. Now, the other thing is, um, the, the, um, it, it, didn't, um, it, it didn't provide objective improvements in spasticity. Uh, and it, it would, it, it, again, the, the American Multiple Sclerosis Society, it's clear that psychoactive effects would need to be reduced, and this is the point about the example that I was making, would need to be reduced to make the, the patient safe and comfortable. There were subjective improvements, and that's in spasticity and pain. 
but no objective improvements in tremor or bladder symptoms. The improvements stated <coughs> subjectively by the patients could not be confirmed objectively by physicians. Uh, now, the, there was also a case when 25 <coughs> multiple sclerosis sufferers who had used street cannabis were compared with 25 who had not. And there was absolutely no doubt that the, that, that the ones who had used it were significantly worse. There were are significantly hundreds. Worse. I, I mean, you, you there are hundreds of it's, peer It's not me studies. that has raised the issue of medical marijuana, so let what, me, it, let me a, if you want to discuss it, uh, if you want to shut me up, I wouldn't blame you, but if you want to discuss it, I'll carry on. The, 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 they were significantly impaired in cognitive function, of the ones who had used marijuana. This is a direct comparison between 25 MS sufferers uh, who had used marijuana. Why, 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 why are so many pharmaceutical companies investing millions and millions? Well, because they, they see people like you getting such success with student audiences that they think in, 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 in time, if they buy enough, buy enough money in there, they, could, they can make up for the fact that, they, that, they've made such a, that they've made such a mess of various other investments they made. That would be a guess. Um, investors <laughs> are always looking cool. for opportunities. And do you know what? I believe capitalism is quite a cynical thing. Um, after all, there are people who make lots of money out of, out, out, of, out of people giving themselves lung cancer, and people who make quite a lot of money about, out of people getting, getting themselves yeah, drunk but Peter, there are hundreds of, of why not, peer have, why not make quite scientific a lot of money out of people getting psychotic? that prove the beneficial effects of cannabis. Yeah, now, the, on, in the, the, the Glaucoma Research Foundation says, says, are, says you, that there are crazy. safer and more reliable medicines than marijuana, which achieve the same, the same effect and which are more effective. Such as? Uh, I, 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 that, that's, you'll have to check with the Glaucoma Research Foundation, but uh, that's what they say. I imagine they'd know. Um, I, 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 I'm sure we can have an email correspondence about it if you're really interested. Do you suffer from it? I don't. Right, okay, not really then. Uh, I, I might, so I'm more interested than you, you are. Um, and the, you know, the, the, there's, there's another big problem, of course, with glaucoma, which is that marijuana use tends to increase the heart rate. And glaucoma tends to affect older people in whom an increased heart rate is not necessarily a good thing. But I won't dwell on it. Well, the point that I'm making is that, of course, you can make a case, uh, largely in symptomatic relief for marijuana, but as with any other drug, <laughs> does it justify the risk that you would take with your mental health? Uh, in, in, in taking but the risk of mental think, health uh, is uh, tiny the, and also and I, and I return to the point that the, one of the chief propagandists for, the, for this drug many many years ago admitted that the whole medical argument which has I say been incredibly successful particularly in I, what is it uh, 20 states plus the district 16 of states uh, have now have now legalized it for medical use it's been incredibly successful but it was stated to be openly by its own propagandists stated to be a red herring from the beginning it was then it is now well what, what it, Keith Stroop says I knew that would make them cross well, what Keith Stroop says does, you know, can, cannot be... Well, you've got a copy of it, though. Well, fine. Say, yeah. Keith Stroop did that in a normal way. <coughs> he implemented 16 states' uh, medical marijuana laws. Keith it, Stroop... I think, it, I think he could be credited with some of the... Achievements. But there are hundreds of doctors across the states. I know there are. And as we said before, doctors aren't always... But, but surely, surely they're better qualified to, tr to judge whether something's efficacious than you are. I wouldn't disagree with that, no, but that, we're not talking about, doc, about, about me. I, almost all the, all the caveats which I've entered in this debate have not been my own statements conjured from my own in, uh, original research. They've been quotations from bodies such as the American MS Society and the Royal College of Psychiatrists, uh, who are doctors, as I understand it, uh, and indeed the Glaucoma Society of people who actually know. So, are you dismissing them, or do they know more? No, I'm not than dismissing you? them or at all. You know, or do you know more than them? I'm not okay, saying okay, I'm okay, more. Than we're having an argument about whether I know more or less than doctors. Let's have an argument about whether you know more. Than the <laughs> I'm not claiming that. I'm, the fact is I'm that presenting expert, evidence. Expert here. opinion disagrees on this, and it disagrees in a way which ought to give pause to thought to anybody who's thinking of taking any of this stuff into his brain. I mean, wouldn't it make sense? Wouldn't it make sense that a, that a psychoactive drug, which altered your, which altered your, your, your mental perception and affected your brain, might conceivably, might conceivably be a cause of mental illness? Well, no, nobody, it, nobody can disagree with that. that. One might follow from the other. Nobody Just can disagree you, with if that. If you suck vast quantities of smoke into your lungs, you might get a lung disease. And these things follow. Nobody can disagree with that. But no, they can't. The facts That's and evidence right. are that the risks are extremely small. Much, yeah, small, much smaller. Much smaller. Have you actually tried cannabis? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah.
Yeah. Must have heard some English. It's a long time ago. Sir, sir. It's a long time ago. It was one of the lucky ones. Excuse me.